Our next speaker is Nathan Hamilton. Nathan Hamilton is the pastor, one of my pastors actually. Uh, we have several pastors at Living Water Fellowship Church, uh, along with uh, actually my other pastor standing over here, Pastor Al, Al, but Pastor Nathan Hamilton, he's the associate pastor, Living Water Fellowship. He also works full time as a software engineer for Lumerit Education. He and his wife Bailey have been active and passionate defenders of the unborn for many years have come out on the sidewalks locally here. Uh, Nathan and his wife and three children live in San Antonio, Texas. Please welcome Pastor Nathan Hamilton. Thank you, Dr. Darrell. It is a privilege to be and an honor to be here and share what God has put upon my heart and I appreciate all of the speakers who have spoken this morning and uh, I echo their thoughts and their their heart regarding this very uh, grievous issue of abortion and uh, I am thankful that I get to share what God has put on my heart. I've titled my message, sermon, whatever you want to call it, um, Emulating the Life of Christ in a Culture of Death. As I reflected upon the life of our Savior Jesus Christ, the Spirit led me to focus on three pivotal examples Jesus gave us throughout his ministry. The three examples are to pray, love, and to act. I want to examine each one of these more closely. First, let us look at the aspect of Christ's prayer. Christ made a priority of prayer. Jesus would make the sacrifice necessary even in the midst of very busy ministry to spend time with the Father in prayer. He would rise in the morning long before the sun was up to get away or get, in the e get away in the evening and spend all night in prayer. This is shown to us in Mark 1.35 and Luke 6.12. Later in the New Testament, we are admonished to pray. In Ephesians 6.18, it says, With all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the Spirit. And with this in view, be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says, Pray without ceasing. In 1 Timothy 2.8, it says, Therefore I want the men in every place to pray, lifting up holy hands without wrath and dissension. One of my favorite books, titled Why Revival Tarries by Leonard Ravenhill, says this about prayer, and I hope it is an encouragement to you. He says, No man is greater than his prayer life. The pastor who is not praying is playing. The people who are not praying are straying. The pulpit can be a shop window to display one's talents. The prayer closet allows no showing off. Poverty stricken as the church is today in many things, she is most stricken here in the place of prayer. We have many organizers, but few agonizers. Many players and payers, but few prayers. Many singers, few clingers, lots of pastors, few wrestlers, many fears, few tears, much fashion, little passion, many interferers, few intercessors, many writers, but few fighters. Failing here, we fail everywhere. The two prerequisites to successful Christian living are vision and passion, both of which are born in and maintained by prayer. The ministry of preaching is open to few. The ministry of prayer, the highest ministry of all human offices, is open to all. Spiritual adolescents say, I'll not go tonight, it's only the prayer meeting. It may be that Satan has little cause to fear most preaching. Yet past experiences sting him to rally all his infernal army to fight against God's people praying. We need to follow our Lord's example and pray diligently for those who are considering abortions, those who have gone through abortions, and those performing abortions. We need to pray that God would work through us and through others to save the lives of these innocent and precious children and most of all, for the salvation of each person. But I would also encourage you to pray that we, as God's people, 
would have the grace to follow Christ's second example, to love. As we read of Jesus' life, we see him going into the homes of both hypocritical Pharisees and unpopular tax collectors and sinners without compromising his pure nature and showing the greatest of love. I want to read to you 1 Corinthians chapter 13, which is the love chapter. It says, If I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but do not have love, I have become a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and know all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith so as to remove mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. And if I give all my possessions to feed the poor, and if I surrender my body to be burned and do not have love, it profits me nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind and is not jealous. Love does not brag and is not arrogant, does not act unbecomingly. It does not seek its own, is not provoked. It does not take into account a wrong suffered. It does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. But if there are gifts of prophecy, they will be done away. If there are tongues, they will cease. If there is knowledge, it will be done away. For we know in part and prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, the partial will be done away. When I was a child, I used to speak like a child, think like a child, reason like a child. But when I became a man, I did away with childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I will fu know fully, just as I have been fully known. But now faith, hope, love, abide these three, but the greatest of these is love. Galatians 5.14 says this, For the whole law is fulfilled in one word, in the statement, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. What people need to see most is the love of Christ over th overflowing through us to meet their deepest needs. Allow me to paraphrase a verse from 1 Corinthians 13. We can have all the answers, hold all the signs, say all the words, march every march, but if we do not have love, it profits nothing. nothing. I challenge you to seek the Lord and ask Him to fill you with His glorious love and that it would overflow to those who are in desperate need of that love. You have heard the phrase, love does. Love is not simply an emotion or feeling, it is an action. This leads us to the last example of Christ I would like us to focus on. Jesus set an example for us, not only that he prayed and that he loved, but that those prayers and love overflowed in actions, the greatest of which was the cross of Calvary, where he took upon himself our sins and the penalty of those sins. Christ was often healing the sick and casting out demons of those possessed. Mark 1, 32 through 34. He fed large numbers and most often preached the gospel of the kingdom of God. It was Christ's love and compassion that stirred him to action on behalf of these needy people. Matthew 14, 14 says this, When he went ashore, he saw a large crowd and felt compassion for them and healed their sick. We are here protesting an organization that stands for death. And this is important. We encourage you, continue to come. These moms who are considering abortion need to know first and foremost that Christ loves them. How will they know unless we go and tell them? They need to know that there are options other than abortion. How will they know unless someone comes and shares the truth amidst the lies that are being shouted to them from every aspect of our culture? Many of these mothers have other health-related needs, and if they have kept their child, needs related to caring for their new little one. Pregnancy care centers around San Antonio are prepared to meet these and many other needs. They are in need of volunteers and financial support to help continue ministering to these women. These are just a few examples of ways that we can act to show life in our culture of death. Many of those this morning talking about the opportunities they have to meet with students on campuses or come and stand in front of these abortion clinics. These are other things that we can be doing to counteract this culture of death and plead with God that we would overthrow 
these abortion centers. As I close, I plead with you to ask God how he would have you pray. Ask God to provide you with opportunities to show his love and allow God to use you as the hands, feet, and mouthpiece of Christ to our culture. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Nathan. Appreciate that word.